Hello, my name is Blake Bettner, Managing Editor of Worn & Wound. Today, we are looking at the Apple Watch Ultra. I'm gonna be giving you my first impressions of this watch, not as a tech reviewer. Uh, we won't be going over a lot of the bells and whistles of the operating system or anything like that, but more from the perspective of a watch enthusiast. So, what is the Apple Watch Ultra? This is the newest Apple Watch from Apple. I have it here next to a Series 7, and the difference is apparent at a glance. Obviously, I didn't um, get that. Could you try again? Where was I? All right, so you can see here the case of the Apple Watch Ultra is quite robust. It has this gnarly crown guard with a button in it over on the right hand side. It's got a anodized orange action button. There's a lot going on here that separate it from just the regular Apple Watch. It's much more toolish in nature. So being a tool watch fan, uh, we've got a few other tool watches, even borderline smart watches here to compare it to. First one is a Casio G-Shock. This particular G-Shock is the GBD H1000. Uh, this has a heart rate sensor, a blood oxygen sensor. It's got all kinds of features that are geared towards runners and people who are doing a lot of high physical activity type stuff. So you can see compared to this thing, the Apple Watch Ultra feels rather reasonable, uh, I would say. So this is the kind of realm that I think it's looking to play in, uh, more so than a standard Apple Watch. So the Apple Watch Ultra gets a 49 millimeter case. However, when Apple says that, they're not taking that measurement in the way that we take measurements of watches, which is usually uh, from three o'clock to nine o'clock, the diameter uh, of the watch. If we do that to the Apple Watch Ultra, we're looking at, at least from the top plate, 38 millimeters from top to bottom, about 46 millimeters. And it's not exactly a svelte watch either at just under 15 millimeters in thickness, but that's okay. This isn't really a watch that's made for everyday wear. This isn't a watch like the normal Apple Watch that's meant to go from the workout room into the boardroom or whatever it is you're doing uh, all throughout the day. This is a watch that feels kind of comfortable in its own skin, being specifically for the activities that you intend to use it for. Obviously, it has a feature set that is geared towards some of the more extreme activities, and it's got some tools to help out in those realms, uh, such as a dive computer, compass, waypoint marking, GPS, these kinds of things. Uh, but again, I'm not gonna get into the tech stuff here. There are plenty of better reviews from that perspective uh, that you can get. However, there are a few considerations here that I think make this a more interesting watch than just being for extreme athletes. For instance, the screen is a much larger surface area. Uh, it's much easier to see what's going on and it's much easier to manipulate what's going on with your finger uh, on this thing. So I think even if you're not an extreme athlete, it's okay to say, well, I like using this more just because it's a little bit more practical. Now, I'm not usually a guy that does a ton of physical activities in my mechanical watches, but a watch like this Tudor FXD, for instance, I go swimming in, I walk around in, I jog in, you know, I, I, would, I would not hesitate to do any of those kind of physical activities in this. Would I be reaching for an Apple Watch Ultra instead of something like that? Maybe, depending on the activity that I'm doing, the appeal of this Apple Watch Ultra is somewhat in the same vein as the FXD. It's a little bit strange, it's a little bit funky. Aesthetically, I really like the look of it and it's just kind of fun to use. These are watches, which is kind of a slippery slope in general. Obviously, a mechanical watch isn't giving me anything that I need that I can't get on my phone or in a hundred other places. Places. So there is a consideration here that is aesthetic and it is experiential. I like the experience of wearing this. I like the way that it looks on my wrist. That carries over to the Apple Watch Ultra in a way that the regular Apple Watch doesn't. I think about it in a similar manner to the Annie Digi watches that I enjoy from brands like Seiko. I've got this SNJ right here, uh, which is kind of a equally funky, kind of large footprint watch. Uh, That's just a really fun experience on the wrist. It's fun to use, it's fun to look at, it's fun to play with. Uh, you know, it has a kind of a suite of features from chronographs and timers and stuff like that, but there's no sensors in there and that's okay. You know, when I use this stuff, even the regular Apple Watch, I don't really need to track my heart rate or anything like that. I'm not training for the Olympics or anything super serious. Just getting out there is enough for me and using it in a practical manner is enough. And the Apple Watch Ultra is an appealing option against watches like this, Seiko. It's got a lot of fun toys and kind of bells and whistles to play with in the operating system. And I think you'll find yourself looking for ways to use them in a manner you otherwise wouldn't. For instance, the elevation here, 
which I can get into with, it has like a working compass in real time. And there's a longitude and latitude complication that you can put into the bezel. There's a lot of fun things like this that you find yourself paying attention to when you're out and about <laughs> uh, that you never really knew you wanted access to in the first place. Of course, you can still get into some of the more traditional watch faces here, but if you're gonna go this route, I think you need to have it all on there. It's kind of half the fun of this watch in the first place. Okay, so as cool as the watch is, there's one thing that had me really excited about this watch, and that is the new original straps that Apple designed for these things. This is the Alpine loop right here, uh, which you tighten and then hook into one of the loops. Just like that. It's really cool, and this is the kind of innovation that I want to see from the Tudors of the world, from the Rolexes of the world, from the Oruses of the world. There's a few other straps that kind of go along the same line that are kind of wholly novel, built for this watch. And a lot of watch brands are utilizing quick release systems these days to advertise the ease of changing out straps or swapping over different straps, but they're not giving us the unique proposition of their own strap designs to put with the watches. Apple's thinking about this, and I think more watch brands should be thinking along these lines as well. The closest thing that I can think to this is the Velcro strap that came on the FXD. Now that's a Velcro strap, it's not like entirely unique, but it was built specifically for this watch. You can imagine if Tudor released the Pelagos 39 uh, with like a wholly unique original strap for that watch. With a design like this, I would love to see it. One thing that I could use is these right here. This would allow us watch people to use a single pass nylon straps with this thing, which I think would be pretty cool. I'm sure there's third party outlets that offer something of the sort. But there are a few other straps. When we go in depth reviewing this watch, uh, we will have access to a few of the other straps. So keep an eye out for that. Speaking of which, uh, we will be taking this into the wilds, maybe try getting lost or something like that. Uh, we will be using it with uh, more traditional mechanical tool watches. If you have any ideas of what you'd like to see us do with this watch, be sure to drop them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this content, please be sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. And until next time, take care.